Got a new lighter. Oh, let's torch that baby. My name is Grace. I am with, or actually I am, the Intuitive Lens here on YouTube. We're gonna talk about the weekly astrology. We're gonna do a little tarot reading. We're just gonna talk about what this week's vibe is. We're thinking about, with Venus in retrograde, in Leo, which is about our love and romance and our self-expression and our creativity. How are we thriving? How are we thriving in the context of our relationships? Um, Venus, the planet of love, beauty, harmony, and, and things like that. How are we relating to those concepts? Are we honoring that which we find beautiful? And do we f see beauty in life um, overall? Maybe that's shifting for us, or maybe we're coming to terms with some, um, with a new sense of beauty, archetypal beauty, not like visual beauty. Um, and the way that I would relate to that sort of theme or topic with this week's energy. This week is about the full moon in Pisces. Pisces rules the 12th house of secrets. It's the last house of, um, in the zodiac wheel. It's the last astrological symbol. It is a time of enlightenment for sure, this full moon in Pisces. It's about things coming to light, especially when it comes to subconscious patterns or conditioning. Pisces often, things, often sees things idealistically and so if you recall, Saturn has been retrograde for some time. It started earlier this summer in the sign of Pisces. So although it's not directly conjunct with the full moon, we have to look at this holistically sometimes and zoom out, you know. Saturn ruling time and reality lessons retrograding in Pisces. We're seeing... I don't want to say the clashing of, but the juxtaposition of the mundane and the spiritual, as well as the I idealistic, idyllic, idyllic, idealistic, whatever, and the real. A theme um, that has been showing up a lot for me in my life, and I'm sure has for many of you, is this idea of the power of the mind how your attitude can really shape your reality, just as how us holding on to things that, you know, maybe are no longer around or, or with us, whether you've moved on from a job or a relationship or something has ended, sometimes we hold on to those feelings of, of positive memories, even though the reality is that those things aren't here anymore. And what we really miss is those feelings, not those situations. Okay, so this transit can be very powerful for releasing any sort of stagnant energy or emotions around that, around um, basically emotional release around anything that can feel nostalgic, or feels like you just need to process on an emotional level. I'm not sure where I was going with that, but I think you understand. And furthermore, it's really powerful time to look at your subconscious patter patterning. So when we think of the full moon and what's rising to the surface, the really, this really has a lot to do with understanding who we are and what it is our needs are. So it's a powerful time for connecting to your heart, making decisions based on how you feel. This is a time to be vulnerable, but also be very delicate with yourself within that vulnerability. It leads to a greater sense of truth, I think. And I mean, capital T, truth. Sometimes beauty, to me, is seeing both sides of a situation, or all sides, many sides to a situation, and realizing that Although, yes, I have my feelings about this, there are other realities and they all exist at the same time. And that's what's really beautiful about our reality. You can, though, ultimately choose where you want to go. What you can't choose is who goes with you. You know, you can't, there's, there's certain things we can control and certain things we cannot control. That's why we have the serenity prayer. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. And, to, and the courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference. What 
so uh, yet another planet is going retrograde. We're really slowing down uh, by the end of this year. Um, there might be a sense of adventure coming this week as well because the sun is trying Jupiter. Jupiter is growth expansion. Sun is us, our ego, our identity. So we might be feeling a little bit adventurous. There might be some lucky energy this week. I think there's definitely a lot of luck around this full moon. So whatever you spend your day doing then, any rituals will have a positive effect, even though on the surface, again, on the on the surface level, it might be pretty emotional, it might be vulnerable, it might um, there you might get a surprise message from from somebody. There things things may come to light. But I think that if you're real with yourself and you run with it, um, I think if you understand that long-term positive effects are worth momentary discomfort and realness. I love that because it also gets you in the practice of being real and vulnerable and leaving room for something extremely positive to happen. I think that's also your mindset. If we think that we can't be real about something, we're, um, we remain an idealistic viewpoint because we're afraid of something negative potentially happening, we have to stop looking at conflict as negative. Conflict is us discussing whether we're in alignment or not, but it has nothing to do with disrespect. I'm not going to say nothing. We should not... Should. Ah! Whenever... On this channel, if I ever speak in superlatives, is that the word I'm looking for? Never. Always. There's always a little asterisk there because I'm carrying certain assumptions about the context in which, you know, I'm, I'm talking about certain themes or ideas, but please don't ever take it as like, you know, always and never. Asterisks, little stars, asterisks. So yeah, Uranus is joining the, the retrograde party. It's, it's retrograding in Taurus, second house, house of values, uh, wealth, materials, Taurus also rules the body. Also Venus, right? Ruled by Venus. So um, when it comes to things like wealth and security, this has been a, a topic for sure for some people. Um, maybe it, it, because we're in Virgo season and Mercury's retrograde, for example, this would be a great time to check on any financial, any financial business that you have. Just check in on your accounts. Make sure your bills are getting paid. Try to like not try to get ahead of any surprises. There might still be surprises like a bill that you didn't expect or something like that, or maybe it's just a good time to check in on those finances. That's what I would say with this Uranus retrograde. Let me see if there's any more notes that I missed. So Uranus retrograde, yeah, surprises and shifts in the realms of our finances, values. Um, I wrote comfort zone. Leave it. <laughs> And this is a time to revolt against stagnant routines. I think the full moon is going to be very beneficial um, with that as well. I think this week overall, we're beginning to see some of how we have our, our past conditioning, our stagnant routines are keeping us from, from going where we want to go, from doing what we want to do, from being who we want to be. Uh, with the full moon in Pisces, um, the new moon was back in February, um, end of February, February, I think, 20th. What were you doing at that time? What were your intentions? What were your goals? And this is a great journal prompt. Just write about how far you've come in the last six months. Where were you? New moon in Pisces. Pisces is also very, you know, it's like the psychic sign. It's very uh, metaphysical, very spiritual. So... When we think about our, our personal spiritual development and how that's come, you can look at it from that perspective. Radical shifts or new directions, a significant time of closure. And I, I wrote a note here about the word closure. Closure can, it's a weird word to use here because I also really feel that this is a time to do what you can to keep your heart open don't um, close yourself off from feeling when it can lead to positive end results or long-term results. See the truth, both sides of or many sides of it. Make decisions from a place of love. Yep. 
and shedding light on unconscious patterns. Yeah, I think we covered it all. So we're going to get into our reading today. Tarot, tarot reading. Um, I want to let you know that on the full moon, if you happen to be in Chicago, on the full moon, I'm going to the full moon fire jam. It's at Foster Beach. I'll have my cards. I'll be doing readings. So if you want to stop by and visit, it's a great time to say hello um, in person. And um, Cosmic Awakening registration has been open for that. If you want to check out more information, that is in the bio. In the bio? Not link in bio. In the description box below. Um, it's a six-week course. It's transformative. Um, I'm partnering with a coach. Her name is Jen. And she's bringing some of her magic and skills to what I do. And we're collaborating on a venture where you can learn more about your cosmic blueprint. So we're going to talk about astrology, of course. We're going to bring your natal charts and we'll talk about um, the, this upcoming transit of a Virgo season and into Libra season and the eclipse, upcoming eclipse season. If you want some guidance around how that's going to look and may look and feel for you, this is a great course to jump in on. You could just jump in on that class or you can join the full six-week course, whatever you decide is good for you. We're also going to be doing tarot. We're going to... I stop, I stop myself with mumbling because I, I don't want to say too much about it. There, it's going to be all over my social media anyway, so you can just go check it out. I just want to tune into what's happening here in front of me right now. But yeah, that's my little promo, promo, promo time. Oh, there was one more thing I wanted to say. I started a meetup group. It's for free group Reiki sessions. I've also started implementing Reiki, specifically distance Reiki in my channeling spreads, um, which I may start calling ancestral spreads because I really use them to tap into energies of you know, people in my life that have passed who are, are guides for me now. Um, if that's something that's, that interests you, you can drop a comment, leave me a question or contact me in any way that you know how to, Instagram or my website. And yeah, so I guess one of those reflections for me with this full moon Pisces is seeing all the creative ways that Reiki is utilized in my life and how it's shaping my tarot and all that. Let's get into it. A reading for the collective, please. What do you got to say for yourself? Victory. This is also acknowledgement. Ace of Swords, acknowledgement. Yes, it is. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> you know what this vibe's like? Is like sort of staying too long in a place. Um, if you're not looking at the screen, what we just pulled was the Six of Wands, Ace of Swords, Six of Swords, Eight of Wands. And the hermit so overall i feel like there's been some sort of like something um how can i put this oh and the wheel of fortune underneath as well you've been receiving some sort of guidance here for sure i think maybe there's been some small wins or validations i remember last week was very interesting it was an interesting reading um in terms of feeling like there was something extremely positive coming in. On the coattails of that, I feel like if you've received some sort of validation or success recently, and you're still shuffling your feet towards moving in that direction, this week what will be illuminated for you with this full moon is definitely something about it's time to get a move on. It's time to start moving. There's going to be communications coming in. There's going to be validations, a message. This. Um, Ace of Swords is about new ideas. The Six of Swords in the reverse is interesting to see. That's what gives me this like shuffling your feet idea of energy. But really what it's telling us is we're going from a place of, you know, some turbulence or drama into calmer waters. And so that's why I laughed because myself, I was 
thinking about how Leo season is over and we're moving into Virgo and it kind of feels like we're becoming a little bit more responsible and things are calming down. And I don't know if the passion of Leo wants to be done yet. I think that we still have a lot of passion within us and it is, you know, I see it as my personal goal and I think that something I want to help people with overall is to live more passionately and that's going to look and feel different for everybody. Don't get too hung up on like what that's supposed to mean at this moment, please. Um, but but that's the, the feeling that I get is like this resistance is because you don't want this good feeling to end. But the thing is, the hermit is here. That's Virgo, right? It's time to put in practical applications into your dreams and your, your you know, whatever visions you have. Remember Pisces is idyllic. Idealistic. I'm going to look that up later. Idyllic. And especially with the new moon in Pisces, which was six months ago, but let's look at this, that whole transit as a whole. It really tells us that our dreams need a practical plan and to balance this, like the spiritual and the mundane. If you've been existing in the spiritual realm and receiving messages and guidance and a lot of intuitive hits and you're like, hey, this is feeling pretty good. I feel like I got a, I got a grip on what I'm doing and where I'm going. How can you support that kind of flow with something structural in your life? So, for example, maybe it's like creating, a, working on your spiritual practice. Maybe it's journaling more or more often or at specific times. How do you build a physical structure, a 3D, you know, 3D physical structure around something that is happening on the spiritual plane um, or vice versa? Anyway, yeah, Uranus in second house, remember, so something definitely relating to our values, our physical property, our bodies even could be surprises. Maybe you're opening to spiritual gifts here. Just saying. Nine of Pentacles, do the work. This is um, very slow movement, but we're doing it. This is us going through things with a fine tooth comb, also Knight of Wands, and with passion. Remember what I was saying? Yeah, passion's not going anywhere, but we are doing the work. I think we're learning how to have, <laughs> look, it matters the way that they show up. They're looking right at each other. So, I'm just thinking about, oh, hold on. Just thinking about how this, it may appear that these two energies are at odds, but actually earth and fire can work together. Um, three of swords underneath. That's telling me that in order to move forward with passion and with diligence, we have to... Be, become find like a brave part of ourselves uh eight of cups moving on from something that was disappointing there's definitely been some heartbreak here and it doesn't have to be about a love or a relationship but ultimately we're just disappointed about how something has or hasn't turned out look at that the world closure we're definitely deciding that we're done waiting for something a situation is over i think this part of um the full moon in Pisces is helping us realize and see things a lot clearer. But this clarity, oh, I think I know what song I'm going to pick for this week. It's a good song. It's a classic song. Maybe you can guess it when I tell you this. Um, we're seeing clearly, but through like watery eyes. If you like to swim or, or be underwater, or if you have filmed things underwater, I have. Um, things are magnified underwater. We're it, shooting through water or looking through water acts as like a magnifying lens. And I love this as a metaphor because it also, it's like, you know, water is emotion. If we're in our feelings, we're also really, our feelings are so powerful. They tell us who we are. Try to identify with a feeling that you've had recently. And try, if you can, remove everything else, out, everything about that feeling that isn't about you. Just you and your feeling. This is about you. What does that tell you? 
defensiveness. But this is also a positive card. This is, says this says the um, this is the seven of wands, and now we have the six, seven, eight. You see how we're moving through the um, cycle of the wands here. Wands is about passion and spirit. The new moon in Leo, if you recall, there was um, a card, the page of wands, it was about the beginning of a spiritual path. So here it is showing up. In other ways, you know, the wands. The lesson of the wands. We have the upper ground. Sometimes it's up to us to defend that, to validate ourselves. This um, Another theme that has come up recently is jealousy. It's, I'm not saying it's showing up here, but I'm sharing in case it's showing up for you is this idea of jealousy. You might be on this brand new path. Look, we have the full. So we have the last card and the first card of the tarot. And between that, In pulling in order, between that is the Seven of Wands. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think you want to go back. I think you're taking control. Look at that. The Emperor. Aries. So after the full moon in Pisces, the next lunation is the full moon in Aries. When I see the Emperor and the Fool together, I think about the qualities of Aries that are divisive. This is also divisive energy. We also have the world as closure, divisive. As in, that was then, this is now. With Aries showing up here as the Emperor, we're really taking control of a situation for ourselves. We're standing out from the crowd. There's that. There was, you know, the energy of the victory card with the uh, six of wands. Acknowledgement or standing out. There's something unique about you. There's something about you or the situation that you're in that's like, this is me. You're coming more into yourself. Do you see that? <laughs> and you know, I don't usually read the bottoms of these cards. People always get like, ask about this. This is a really old deck that I have. And usually I say, don't pay attention to that. But can you read what that says? It's the Four of Wands, by the way. It's the 11-11 card. It's fated. This could feel like fated energy. <sighs> Unexpected good fortune. Uranus in... Uranus stationing retrograde in Taurus. There's also celebration here on the card. So I think this is also called the commitment card. Whatever you might be committed to, um, you know, I'm committed to learning more about myself. I'm committed to honoring myself. I'm committed to feeling my feelings. You're going to see growth in those areas and it's going to make ripple effects that affect all parts of your life. Every lunation, every full moon, every new moon, every day, honestly. But, you know, I like astrology because you can look at specific transits and then you can look at, um, yeah, like natal and transits for yourself on a personal level. But um, yeah, just a reminder, this was a collective reading here. So I hope that it resonates. If it does, like the channel, subscribe. Why don't you share it? And don't forget to check out the description box below for the goodies that I have for you guys. Okay. Thank you so much for being here. I love you so much. Bye.